All right, yo, what's going on, everyone? Yorks here. Welcome back to another Beast Storm Simulator video. And in this one, I'll be doing a tutorial for all you newer players. It's not really a tutorial, but a video, if I were to start Beast Storm Simulator over again, here's what I would do. So if you didn't know, I'm kind of a Beast Storm veteran. I've been playing ever since the game came out for over four years now. So that means I have a bunch of experience. And on top of that, I have over 1 quadrillion lifetime honey and 50 bees. So yeah, I pretty much completed everything you can possibly do inside of Bee Swarm. So if you don't know who to take advice from, you can trust me on that. I know my fair share about Bee Swarm. I'm kind of a connoisseur. So yeah, if you enjoy or this video does help you out at all, make sure you drop a like and subscribe with post notices on. It really does help support my channel. And yeah, let's get right into the video. So starting off, I have to talk about the biggest mistakes I made as a noob player. And by noob, I mean someone who first started playing. So codes. Codes are amazing. They can give you trillions and quadrillions of honey if you use them correctly. Keyword, if you use them correctly. When I was a noob, I wasted a lot of codes that I probably shouldn't have, and I probably should have saved them till endgame. As an early game player, what I would do with codes is use one code at a time for the Ready Player 2 event, if you didn't know. Those codes give you a bunch of capacity and multipliers for fields. Make sure you only use one at a time as an early and mid game player because you do not want to use them all at once, it's kind of a waste. And then you can complete the Ready Player 2 event. That's what I would do. And with codes, which give you like up to times 15 wins, stuff like that, that give you a Honey Day event, I would save those as well until you are good enough to boost for a couple billion or even a couple trillion honey. It might be tempting to use them early on, but trust me, it's not worth it. No matter how tempting it is, you can always like resist the urge and save them until you're a better player. Or unless you feel like quitting Bee Swarm. I know a lot of people do that as well. But yeah, codes, make sure you use them correctly. Moving on, we have this thing called eggs. I'm sure all of you know what that is. There are millions and millions types of eggs. You got silver eggs, gold eggs, diamond eggs, mythic eggs. I'm not going to name all of them. But the biggest things you want to pay attention to as an early game player in terms of eggs are the gold and diamond eggs. And let me explain why. The diamond eggs are used to craft the diamond mask, which can be found over here. That diamond mask costs 5 diamond eggs, and the reason you want to save your diamond eggs is because they are very hard to get as a free-to-play player. You can always spend 2,000 Robux buying 5 diamond eggs, or you can always save them, and when you have enough resources to afford the diamond mask, you can just do that instead of spending 2,000 Robux. But yeah, there are many ways to get free diamond eggs. You can get one from the Black Bear, you can get one from the... You can get one right below the Dancing Bear in the Star area, the 30 Bear area. And same goes with the Gold Eggs. Gold eggs are used to craft the honey mask, which is definitely going to be your best mask for mid game and even early game. It's not too expensive. The biggest thing is probably the enzymes and oils. The honey is easy to get, treats are easy to get. Gold eggs, once again, you can either save them up, you can get some for free from all the NPCs, especially the black bear. The good thing about gold eggs is you can buy them with tickets, but still, if you're going to be buying gold eggs with tickets, you're going to be wasting like 250 tickets on that. You would definitely want to spend that on an event bee instead of the gold eggs. So yeah, save them. You get you get what I'm talking about. Next is something I know a lot of early game players get confused about, and even myself when I started playing. So levels and hive slots, two things you can level up and buy inside the game. And there is a balance that should be kept when leveling up your hive and buying new hive slots. The thing I always tell everyone in my tips and tricks videos is if you level up your hive, getting the next hive slot and even getting more tools will be so much easier. That's why I see pros with level 21 hives. Myself, I'm almost a full level 20 hive. Levels are the thing that keeps this game thriving and why all these leaderboard players have 26 quadrillion honey. If you want quadrillions of honey, level up your hive. But you do not want to spend all of your honey on levels. Make sure you keep like a 33% balance between three things. Saving for better tools, leveling up your hive, and buying more hive slots. Keep a fair balance between the three and you should be chilling. And I also like to say, don't stress or overthink all the levels and stuff. If you if you feel like leveling up your hive, do that. If you feel like you want to spend a couple hundred million or a couple hundred billion on the hive slot, you might want to do that as well. And same with the gear. Gear, I feel like you shouldn't strive too hard to get. The things I would really try and save up for are all the porcelain tools in the top shop, like the mask, the belt, and the boots. And same with the porcelain dipper and the portal hive. Buy the glider as early on as you can. It's going to be the most useful thing you ever buy inside the game. I've been using this glider for like four years now. Maybe over, maybe over four years. And it's the best purchase ever. And I know in other simulators, it might seem smart to save your money or whatever currency the simulator uses. And skip over one item to get the better item. And overall, save like 
a decent chunk of your money. But in Beast Swarm, it doesn't work like that. I feel like if you can afford a better item, you should definitely buy it because it's going to help you progress onto the next even better item faster. Hopefully that makes sense. So say you buy this backpack, what's it called? The Porta Hive. Say you buy the Porta Hive for however much honey it is. You do not want to go directly from the Porta Hive to the Porcelain Porta Hive. You want to go from the Porta Hive to maybe like the Red Porta Hive or the Blue Porta Hive, whichever one you want. I think I'm ready to settle my beef with the Blue Backpackers. You know, all my friends, they're Blue Backpackers out here. So yeah, if you can afford a better backpack, a better tool, a better sprinkler, or a better planter, go ahead and purchase it. You're not going to regret it. And another thing, sprinklers, they're going to last you a long time, and planters, they're also kind of permanent. So even if you like think you're not going to be using it in a while, you might be. Especially planters like the tacky planters, the blue clay, and the red clay. They're extremely useful, they're very good because they're cheap, and they provide insane nectar. Probably the best nectar in the game. So yeah, if you can afford a planter, buy it. Same with the sprinklers, you got my, you get the gist of what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? And next question I would like to answer is the hives. So when I'm talking about hives this time, I'm not talking about hive slots or levels, but I'm talking about gifted bees and what type of bees you should be keeping inside your hive. So when I was early in mid game, bee swarm gifting and bee swarm levels have come out. You know, in bee swarm, there weren't always levels and gifted bees, surprisingly, like back in my day, we ain't got those. But the type of five you would like to have is I'd say at least one of every single gifted bee, no matter how bad it seems, just keep it. That's what I tell my friends here. I don't know why this noob has three gifted rage bees, but you do bro. But yeah, keep at least one of every single gifted bee. It helps you with the free royal jelly over in the star hall. And it just helps you with overall farming because every single gifted bee, if it's not a dupe, if it's not a duplicate, meaning you only have one of it, it gives you insane buffs like bomb pollen, plus one bee attack, times 1.1 capacity, 15% blue pollen, you get the point. You get what I'm talking about. And for legendaries, I'd say keep at least one of every single legendary. Once again, it's useful, especially if it's gifted. But the legendaries that you really want to keep, or the dupes you really want to keep in your hive, is carpenter bees and baby bees. Baby bees, the reason they're good is not because of loot luck, but because of baby love. If you read right here, it grants you times two pollen, which is, you know, pretty good buff, same as bear bee. So if you stack the bear buff and the baby love, that's times for pollen. Simple as that. And the carpenter bee gives you this thing called pollen mark and the honey mark. Honey mark converts your pollen wall in the field, and pollen mark gives you like up to 2.5 times pollen, which is once again pretty cool. Up to 6.5 times pollen if you stack the three buffs. So that's why, so I'd say get at least like four or three baby bees and as many carps as you can until you run out of storage. Keeping one or two lion bees might also come in handy because they have the best attack out of any single bee in the game. Spicy bees are better for attack hives, same with precise, but I doubt you guys have precise bees. Or I doubt you guys have attack hives at early and mid game. Moving on, Robux, money, wasting money on bee swarm. If you feel like being paid to win and uh, spending Robux on bee swarm, make sure you're doing it correctly. The first thing you're going to want to spend your Robux on is the bear bee. And the reason you want to buy the bear bee is because it is the only thing inside of bee swarm that you cannot get for free. Except the game passes. But literally everything else about Bee Swarm is free to play on it has to make his billions of dollars somehow. Next thing I would also buy is the Cub Buddy. And if you guys are thinking, Yarigs, why would you buy the Cub Buddy? You can buy it for 2,000 tickets over in a ticket tent. Well, the reason is it's 2,000 tickets. With that, you can buy four event bees. No, five event bees if you buy the Crimson Cobalt. So you can literally buy everything in the ticket tent. So you can literally buy either the Cub Buddy or every single bee in the ticket tent. So tell me which one you think is more valuable. To me, I'd rather save those tickets and spend the 6 bucks on the Cub Buddy. And the game passes are kind of self-explanatory. I would buy the times 2 Honey Speed Pass, it's very useful. You're going to be using it a lot in early and mid game. Even end game sometimes. And the times 2 Bee Pollen Pass, it's also nice. So pretty much everything in the Bee Swarm Robux shop costs about $20. So if you want to blow $20 on Bee Swarm, why not? You know, if you think you like the game a lot. It's definitely worth it. Like, hashtag ad sponsored by Onnit. Maybe one day. Hey Onnit, hit me up for the sponsorships. I'm down. Or give me access to your private test realm server. I would also love to get a chance to play that. Wink wink. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my little tips and tricks video. With a different title. So yeah, this is pretty much what I would do. And this is what I did when I started Beast Swarm on a new account. So yeah, if you enjoyed or this video helped you out at all. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe. It really does help me out.
And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.